What does it take to be a successful manager in today's music industry? Hello world, this clip is from episode number 20 from the podcast, and this is with John Phillips, who is the co-owner of Silverback Management. He's also the manager for Slightly Stupid and has managed Sublime from day one. He has a lot of valuable lessons and insight into becoming an artist manager in today's music industry. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, the link is below in the description. Also, if you have any questions or would like to learn any about any more about any specific topics, uh, leave a comment below. And you can also reach out to us by going to makingitwithchrisg.com and the contact is right there. I hope you enjoy this clip with John Phillips. Live the life you love. I'm sure a lot of aspiring managers, like those are the stories that they don't really hear, right? They see all the, the fun and the sexy side of the business, but there is a lot of challenges that come with working with artists. And like part of it is too, like prioritizing those challenges. Like what is some advice you would give someone that's getting into management, how to like prioritize those challenges and try to like overcome those challenges? Yeah. I, well, I mean, the first thing about it is, and it is the perception of what it is is not, as glamorous as it as it seems. Mm-hmm. So if you're getting into it for that reason, you're getting into it for the wrong reasons, yeah, you sure. know. Um, and everything they tell you about the music business, and there is that you know famous quote by Hunter S. Thompson that's like the music business is. Uh, I forget how you can, we can pull it up, but uh, actually let me pull it up here. Yeah. But um, it you know it. it it's it rings very 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 true because um this isn't uh, it's a cutthroat ego driven type of you know thing and it's also where art meets commerce mm-hmm. is a very uh it's a unique dynamic mm-hmm. with, with respect to you're making a business out of art so um you come across situations that you if you're just in it for the party i mean you're gonna get run over right you know oh, yeah. and you you need to educate yourself on the history of you know all these kind of things that have come up now and i mean if you're coming up in the music business now you're dealing with a complete shift in the paradigm because mm. of technology sure. um and so it's it's way different than when i first started you know um so we're constantly evolving. I mean, the thing that will, I think, never change is that um, you uh, you have to be prepared to deal with the, the, the worst things that anybody tells you. Mm-hmm. And, and as I pull this up, the Hunter S. Thompson quote says, The music business is a cruel and shallow money trench. A long plastic hallway where thieves and pimps run free mm-hmm. and good men die like dogs. Mm-hmm. There's also a negative side. Right. And he did quote that back in the golden era of the music business where it probably was, in a lot of regards, a lot more fun and games. But it's it's still true. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, you're dealing with, uh, with a lot of... Uh, you know, it's gangster. Right. It's like, you know <laughs> what I mean? So uh, it just is... That's how it is. And you got to be educated with you know everything you can be and so for me my advice to anybody is have as uh voracious of an appetite for knowledge as you possibly can Mm -hmm. uh when i first got into the music business um you know i was told by my mentors absorb right and you know so i got the ability to be a fly on the wall and listen to things and read things Mm -hmm. and um you know for me i also like just the music is that's what kept me motivated right. uh is trying to accomplish great things in music um there's a lot of different sides of what you can do in the music business but i always am like you have to stick with what you believe in mm-hmm. because most people uh for anything you love you're going to get tested the most and uh if i listen to everybody that told me that sucks or it's not going to make it or, right. you know, like, why do you do this? Right. Um, I wouldn't be where I'm at, yeah, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, it's believe in, believe in what you're, you know, what you're representing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that belief is what 
can take you the f- furthest. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, you're right. You know what I mean? The product does have to be good, I sure, think. And especially now, is it's... Um, the court of public opinion exists online, so there's you know certainly ways to manipulate all that. But at the end of the day, um, everything's out in the open now. You know, analytically, you can see if people like something or right. not. You mm-hmm. know, and um, so yeah, I think you just believe in what you're doing mm-hmm. and stick with it. And if you can sustain through enough time, and you're right, you're gonna get the rewards at Mm -hmm. the end but it's going to be a long road yeah and anything else is like pulling a slot machine you know not handle and winning you know Mm -hmm. the 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 royal flush of some big hit singer (laughs) it's like that's a great illusion you Mm -hmm. know Uh, overnight success tends to be 10 plus years right um for anything that i've been involved in Mm -hmm. that's you know received as successful yeah. yeah I always said overnight success is if you work really, really hard for 10 years and then you're an overnight success. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, it's true. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, uh, it, it just is that way. I mean, things now can just get out there a lot quicker because you can be an artist and drop a song on your own and, you know, put it out to the universe mm-hmm. because there's YouTube and, right. you know, Facebook and uh, you're an instant now, like you're just, you can broadcast anything to the world mm-hmm. and, this is about you know the consistency of and the quality of how you do that, mm-hmm. and over time, cumulatively, you have a voice that could reach you know an exponential amount of people with exponential growth if it's really good and people take a liking to it, then the word could spread you know through and you have to have a belief in that and also uh, knowledge in the technology i guess in terms of how you can also you know use the tools of technology to sure. help you succeed mm-hmm. and that's you know something that's different now than before mm-hmm. if you were able to set up like a, a four-week crash course into how to become an artist manager what would that four-week crash course look like what, what kinds of things and skills would you have students learn and uh come intern for silverback music <laughs> control <laughs> substance sound labs uh and shadow, shadow me for uh, a month if you can keep up. But nah, uh, <laughs> it's uh, you know, one. I think it's hard. You expose yourself to as much as you can, so you know what area interests you the most. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, for me, a lot of stuff right now. It's creative marketing. It's a creation of content and how you mm-hmm. actually get that out there to the masses and there's so many avenues to do that the Mm -hmm. landscape is completely different and um you know whereas terrestrial radio and magazines ruled the the typical gatekeepers of how something was exposed you know now it's a lot different Mm -hmm. you know so um i would say that find the lane that intro that interests you the most and um you know things have become where i look at uh, music managers because you know there's the there's not a business paper pushing scenario right. you know, there's that you need to know contractual stuff you need mm-hmm. to be aware of how you know record labels work or distribution mm-hmm. companies DSPs what you know the equations and all of that publishing is a huge part of the business obviously which as record sales of downloads and physical cds kind of plummet you know streaming technology is the you know the status quo everyone's getting their music off Mm -hmm. the streams and there's a monetization to Mm -hmm. all of that that's happening albeit not as favorable as artists and you know independent labels would like to see but um you know digital rights management is a big part of the game because we got a wild wild west of content being consume for right. free to the consumer which mm-hmm. is great most things are an advertising or subscription model right um and the there's a lot of the court of public opinion and the politics of the music business and um how things start to the landscape starts to form itself i mean we're in an interesting time period over the last 10 years where technology companies actually were like well there's the ability to distribute music like this and the record labels resisted it for so long Mm -hmm. because they're in the game of selling physical media uh and they pretty much got taken over 
you know, by Steve Jobs and Apple, mm-hmm. uh, and subsequently now by Sean Parker and Spotify and Pandora's, where and just the digital sharing of music amongst peers. You know, it's like back in the day we used to have to cut a duplicate cassette tape and give right. an actual <laughs> physical copy to somebody. Yeah, yeah. And the Grateful Dead were built on that, you know? I mean, that's hand-to-hand tape trading. Mm-hmm. But now everything is just like, you know, you just shoot your, your buddy a text of a MP3. Of, right. you know, I mean, what anything, yeah. you know? So it's like, uh, it's it, trying to gain a, a perspective of, of how everything is working now and where you fit. Uh, mm-hmm. And... Um, the more that you can absorb and, and the more that you can kind of experience, then I think you're going to give yourself a better chance to succeed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah.